Greetings, guys. It's Bill Fitzgerald with the second episode of uh, FSOT prep, FSOT prep. Uh, I, I told you yesterday that I would give you another resource to help you choose your career track, which is a very, very important choice you have to make when it comes time to register. Now, registration opens on the 29th, just uh, about two days from now. So reach out to these folks, um, you know, over the next week. Uh, it helps, frankly, to, to register early, if only to make sure that you get your, um, you get your test center that's closest to you. Folks overseas, American embassies will be offering this test too. So don't, don't think that because you're um, tucked away in the developing world. Now the Foreign Service, the embassy will likely offer the test. In any case, let's go to where we're going. I told you about diplomats in residence. So the program started about 15 or 20 years ago to deal with the really, really low percentages of minority candidates and FSOs. Uh, now for women, women have slowly been, uh, slowly over the past two decades, risen to become 40%, uh, and men uh, make up 70, oh, 60%. Um, I'd say the Africa Bureau, frankly, is, is probably the leading the way, uh, not only in the number of women in senior positions, but also with the number of women who are serving as ambassadors. Um, but I'll take you, this is the other resource, Diplomats in Residence. So, Diplomats in Residence are stationed at, tied to campuses in 16 different universities across the United States. The folks who are filling in, uh, who are working as Dips in Residence, are uh, seasoned. They've been around the block many times. They know what they're talking about. Some may be um, more forthcoming. And we're all diplomats at the end of the day, so uh, you may have to ask them to speak candidly with you. And that's why I suggest not email correspondence, but you want to get them on the phone. And I'll show you how you do it. You go to connect. We're back on state.gov or careers.state.gov. Fabulous site. And I have to give the department credit. And I'm going to click on, you go to connect, and then uh, you see the connect there. And then you go down here. Oh, you're asking me to do it twice. To diplomat some residents. And as I mentioned, these folks are um, based on campuses throughout the United States. And as you might ex expect, because they're trying to drive up numbers of minorities, recruit more minorities, Hispanics, Asians, African Americans. I mean, it's really atrocious, frankly. And Native Americans, of course, it's really atrocious. Why? Because we're diplomats, and we're diplomats representing the United States. We should be able to show, you know, how the United States is made up. It's, it's unacceptable that Asians and Hispanics are, are, are lower than, are beneath 5%. African Americans are probably between 5 and 7%. And Native Americans, it's really horrible to say, but there are fewer than 1% of FSOs serving um, are Indians. It's crazy. Well, in any case, that's how they decided. You'll see first that it's currently em empty, but um, the State Department picked out two traditionally uh, black colleges. One is uh, Morehouse Spellman and Howard up in uh, DC. Uh, for Native Americans, they picked the University of Oklahoma and the University of New Mexico. Obviously for New Mexico, they're hoping to um, work with Hispanic, uh, recruit Hispanic students. Um, Asians, and let's start with Cecilia Choi. Uh, uh, seems like a gifted officer. She's worked at the National Security Council. She's an economic officer. 
And they're not all that many as dips in residence. Uh, she's got a good grasp of Persian, Korean, German, and Spanish. Wow. I'm impressed. Anyway, um, you need to get in touch with her. So how you do it, if you're an econ officer, I don't care where you are. Even if you, because they want you, the department says that you should be working with the dip in residence in your region. That's, that's crazy. All these people who choose to be dips in residence do it because they want to help foreign service or potential foreign service officers. So they're not going to say, so in fact, when you write your email to Cecilia, you put your name, your email, your city, wink, wink. So maybe you're in Honolulu. So she, in theory, would talk. None of these people is going to say, I'm sorry you're not from my region. But um, what I suggest you do is you send her a message. I'm looking for information uh, for somebody who wants to go into the economic home. Can you give me the pros and cons? Can you speak candidly? Can you tell me what's, um, is, is everyone a second class citizen compared to the Paul career track, a political career track? Um, then we'll go back to the map because I want to show you, there are a couple of management officers. She's not, she's public diplomacy. This is Melissa Martinez. Don't know her. Also has some pretty interesting experience, mostly in Latin America. She's been in 15 years, speaks Spanish and Portuguese, and they have little snippets of why, why they joined the Foreign Service, and you might find that interesting, or if anything, to be able to have a couple of questions to open with, or on the places that they've served. Uh, this is for public diplomacy. So again, send them an email, say, I'd like a chance to talk to you with, over the next week, at some point in the next week, if it's possible. Um, I'm at your convenience, um, and they'll probably come back with their phone number and a day and date, and you work it out with them. It's not, a, it's not time to be shy with these folks. This is what your job's all about. Now, and then there's Dorothy. I knew Dorothy when she was, I guess, no. She was, she was on the staff of the Undersecretary for Political Affairs, which is a pretty big job. And her job was staff assistant covering the Africa Bureau when I was DAS there. She's a talented officer, uh, political track. So all you Paul types who haven't decided whether you want to be Paul or Econ, um, get in touch with Dorothy. She's based at the University of California, Berkeley. Um, again, probably pushing for to recruit Asians, African Americans. Um, and then a management officer. Now, the, now, Stuart Devine is based at the University of Denver. Stuart's very interesting because he was in the military, was in the Army first, and he rose to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, and he segued, obviously, uh, into a management position at state. I consider that very interesting because if there are any vets, veterans listening to this, you might want to get in touch with Stuart and see what, what advice he has for you, military to military. But he's also a management officer, so all you management folks, check out the map. Stuart seems like a straightforward guy, and he's been in for 35 years, but that includes his military experience. Um, all of these folks do this job because they want to boost the number of, uh, we've done Melissa from before, Monique Sada, they've done this job before. They're taking this job, a lot of people used to take it as sort of their swan song, their last thing before they left and retired. Most of these folks don't seem like that to me. Monique Quesada has been in for 29 years. Yes, she could retire, but she's been fast-tracked for a long time. Um, she was working in the secretary's office as a, young, as a more junior officer. Uh, she was a flight attendant on Pan Am before she joined, but she's been in 29 years, and Monique knows how, this, how the system works. If you're political, she puts down political affairs and public diplomacy. Feel free to get in touch with us. She's very nice, very open. And I think the benefits with getting people who are uh, a bit older is that they will be more likely to be candid with you. 
And I think that's important. You want people to be candid with you. Um, we have another, uh, we have a dip in residence based in Tufts. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Maybe impoverished Massachusetts <laughs> count as the minority group. I still, there, there are two universities. Why do we have a dip in residence? The whole point is to boost minorities. Why do we have a dip in residence at Tufts and at Duke, which is currently vacant? Anyone who's worth his salt at Duke, any student, I don't care what group they make up or are part of, from at Tufts and Duke will know how to get into the, know how to take the Foreign Service. <laughs> Anyway, Philip is, seems like a very nice guy. He's been working uh, 14 years as a public diplomacy officer. Uh, his most recent post was from Slovenia. Wow. And that was his second tour as a public affairs officer. Again, hit this, where you can get in touch with him via Facebook. Although I think it's better for you to reach out via email. Well, okay. The Duke position, and remember what I say, wink, wink between us. If you're, a, if you're a public diplomacy officer, but you come from, you know, Southern California, you don't have a public diplomacy officer in Southern California. You have an econ officer at UCLA. Reach out to someone like Philip. There are a whole bunch of, you go through the maps and you decide. Send him an email, get in touch with him. Uh, he will... Um, he will talk to you. You may have to fudge on the, you know, what state you're coming calling from, or what city you're calling from. But really, what you're trying to do at this point, you got to choose your career track. So you want to talk to the people who know most about the career track you're interested in. Okay. Now after that, these guys, these men and women, are circuit riders of a sort. Um, they travel within their region. And the one I noticed travels a lot is uh, a human resource officer, which is, is typically a specialist job, but it also means a management, it's probably a management um, uh, career track officer, Dale Giovengo. Seems like a straightforward guy, he's, has done very well, has served in Baghdad, Pakistan, some tough places, Albania, very tough. And he's coming out of his last post, his DCM, Deputy Chief of Mission at the U uh, U.S. Embassy in Colombo in Sri Lanka. What's important about the Deputy Chiefs of Mission is they have in their work requirements mentoring the ELOs, the entry-level officers. We used to call them junior officers, JOs, before they reached tenure at an embassy overseas. So, I mean, you can ask him. He's... Trust me, this guy has mentored probably, you know, I don't know how big Embassy Colombo is, but he's probably mentored tons of people at, at post before. Um, and he seems like a straightforward guy, and I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you. So if you're a management cone officer and you live in Florida, hit, a, hit Dale or hit uh, the fellow out of the University of Denver. Who were both management officers. University of Denver, that's right, that was Stuart Devine. Okay, let's get out of here. You know where that is, you know how it works, and that's the important thing. Um, in theory, these guys, these folks also go out and do recruitment events. They'll be at the, you know, recruitment for uh, veterans, They'll go to the various university campuses around where they're where they've been uh, where they're based, um, and the recruitment events. You get a button to hold these guys. Now I do know, for instance, that in fact, and it's not a great site for finding the recruitment events. I'll do it this way. I won't even come up. Come on, guys. Recruitment events, it has a very bad box. It doesn't work very well. So I'm just gonna put in the state. Because I know that Dale, for some reason, is going to at least one uh, recruiting event in Pennsylvania. So, 
Pennsylvania. Thank you very much. I'm not going to put the city in because I want to see what's going on in all of Pennsylvania. I think what's the problem is that it tends to be slow. Here, Allegheny College, meet with the diplomat. Uh, Veterans Job Fair in Cleveland. If you're around on the August 30th, that's the place to go. On August 28th, um, Allegheny College, uh, University of Pittsburgh is having career panel discussion and networking and a welcome home bash. That sounds like fun, September 7th. And uh, Dale is gonna have open office hours um, had one on the, no, on September 17th and then on uh, September 18th. Then he's probably traveling. But you can see in Pennsylvania there are a number of places where you should see. Obviously, you want to do this before the cutoff for registration. Um, um, but that's it for now. Um, a shorter, shorter video. I like the screencasting. Let me know what you think. If you have specific questions you want to, you want me to answer, um, I'll be uh, I'd be eager to do it. I want to hear what you want to say. So put your comments down below, and tell me what you think. Also, if you're if you have friends who are interested, pass it along to them. And please do if you find these at all interesting or helpful, subscribe and and press the bell so you're you're notified in the next time I post another. Uh, post a video. Again, it's Bill Fitzgerald signing off from South Carolina. Take care, all.